Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about the lens tech, SPL3, and my experience uh, really with these types of lenses over the last nine years. Uh, the design of a bifocal lens has been around for a long time, from Benjamin Franklin's time and where its use is we're fami more familiar with than glasses, and has moved then more recently into the intraocular lenses. This really, in my opinion, has transformed the use of multifocal lenses for patients and widened greatly the uh, ability to use through all types of patients in the presbyopic uh, era. Uh, it is uh, essentially monofocal lenses, one stuck upon another with the near segment uh, usually uh, has in the past been placed inferiorly and is very different from this concentric multifocal uh, uh, concept uh, where there is always a, a greater loss of contrast. The SBL3 is a, is a rotationally, as we know, asymmetric. Uh, the, the segment below takes up about 42% of, of the entire optic. Um, the optic size is 5.75 millimeters. The whole length is 11 millimeters. Um, and its material is 26% water. Now, the key point uh, with the near segment and the distance is when the distance is in focus, the, the near and parallel rays of light are coming. The, the, this is unfocused light. It, is, uh, it causes a splay, a wide-shaped splay of, of light shadow in a certain portion of the retina. And that is in the opposite aspect of the retina to inferiorly. So if it's inferiorly, it will be superiorly at that wedge. It's always there and the, the eye quickly adapts to it because it's got this very high quality vision coming from the, the distance uh, part of the optic. So what's the eligibility for these? Well, they're all presbyopic patients. Uh, and also in pre-presbyopic patients where your refractive errors aren't suitable either for laser corneal surgery uh, or uh, phacic IOLs. Uh, how well does, does the lens work? Well, most people, certainly in my hands, will, will be independent of glasses. Uh, a small uh, remainder will still use reading glasses for very small print, particularly uh, where there's poor light at night and they, they want to have the the uh, uh, book very close to them. Are there side effects? Well, with any dual optic or multifocal lens, there will always be side effects. But if these lenses are used appropriately, certainly I find the, the side effects are very small and explantation in my own hands is exceptionally low. I mean, really in nine years, I've only explanted in three patients. The pupil diameter, I feel, is immensely important to, to uh, uh, be clear and avoid any problems. Uh, and the reason why it is, as you can see here, the shift of the center of, of this pupil can shift quite a lot in some patients in the photopic situation. And that, as you can imagine, as the pupil gets smaller with age, and as you can see here uh, from data, there is a reduction in pupil size as one as we are all familiar with, with age. And particularly, this mimics also in the photopic, which is smaller again. If you, you have this uh, area getting smaller and there's some decentration of the lens to the photopic pupil, you can see where you can either lose some of the near or you can lose some of the distance. And if that reaches a critical zone, uh, in, and for the distance, if you get below 40% in distance viewing, you will sometimes get symptoms, certainly if it's in the dominant eye. And that's very important because originally when I implanted these uh, with manufacturers, the recommendation was sort of putatively to keep them infranasally placed. The reason why, certainly in the Caucasian population, is most pupils, when they constrict, they move infranasally for reading. If both of them are in that position, and you have a small pupil, and there's decentration, you can end up losing some of the distance, and that can cause symptoms. So to uh, correct that and avoid those sorts of problems, I now routinely, in the dominant eye, place the near segment supertemporally, and diametrically opposite to the non-dominant where I put the near segment infranasally. And so that means if there's some mismatch here, I'm not getting it compounded in both eyes. So in both eyes, I'm not going to lose either the near 
or lose the distance depending on what way the pupil is going because the pupils in both eyes go the same way. If the pupil's photopic moves this way or this way, I'm going to lose it if I have them symmetrical. So I keep them, uh, I, I design them to be in the opposite direction. As regards implantation, this is quite a stiff lens and for that reason, it's important in the trailing part that when you're pushing, because it's stiff, you don't want to damage the actual uh, capsule, so you push really quite directly downwards rather than pushing along that sort of an angle. Then you can adjust afterwards. I personally, not everyone does this, but I personally always place a, a CTR. And the reason being that it means that if I need to adjust the position of this lens at a later date, it facilitates that. And it, it also, if you put it in after the lens, it doesn't change the effective lens position. As regards ensuring your biometry is consistent and refractive position with the effective lens position, I routinely always take out the viscoelastic, which is good surgical practice for us all, but it's important for refractions in these types of lenses. So what are my safety results? You can see it uh, at 12 months, I have no loss of two or more lines. I have a gain of that, which indicates in this age group there was some cataract involved. Most of these were meant to be clear lens, but the older ones always have some nuclear opacification. That was on a, a broad range of both hyperopic and uh, 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 range of hyperopic and myopic patients. Um, you can also see in the intermediate visual acuity, although it was down at one year to 38% being 612, you had 100% were 618 or better. And if you, when we looked at specifically asking about quality of life indices, for the intermediate vision, 82% said it was clear, with only a few saying there was problems with their intermediate vision. The near vision with the SBO3 is excellent. With, this is at 40 centimetres, 612 or greater, 100%. It's very important, I find, to, to measure subjectively how patients feel. Because objectively, as I say, if the pupil is big when you measure their snell and visual acuity, they'll always see 66. But in bright light, they may be suffering if the, the pupil is coming down and you're losing some component. So we've used this and developed it. And what we found that this was at one month, this is at one year. We find that our quality of vision improves with neuroadaptation. The standard deviation gets smaller and similar in the night vision. If we look at one case study, uh, and I'll rush through after, this was we had placed both eyes with infranasally placed. One month post-op, the quality of vision was poor. We rotated it. 120 degrees to supranasally rather than infranasally and we had a real big increase in quality of vision. So that's just to, to emphasize the point I said about positioning of the lens so they're not both in the same position. There are other ways to treat presbyopia but one should always keep in mind the loss of spectral transmission, the loss of actual total light transmission of the lens with age, the loss of contrast and modulation transfer function with age, and therefore the benefit in, these sort of, uh, in this age group of, of lens extraction and exchange for this bifocal. There are, also with cataracts, there are complications which occur, but with good uh, surgical practice, these are, 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 are low, and with the understanding of those with higher risk, total exfoliation, diabetics, and to avoid those with, with actual problems preoperatively, you can get very good outcomes. The key point, and to, to emphasize it again, if you're starting to get blurred vision and phototic symptoms, and you start to see PCO, always be careful to ensure that the, the blurred vision and phototic symptoms were not there right from the start. If they're right from the start, you should be analyzing that pupil again and working out is the, is the lens in an appropriate position and is it not a problem with the lens position uh, rather than for distance viewing rather than simply the PCO because once you've done the eye capsulotomy you can't change this lens position. So just uh, there is an FDA trial which is now in progress or at the six month uh, point there in total there will be 340 bilaterally implanted with uh, a 170 control monovision. Currently, the six-month results are what you're seeing. They're excellent distance, intermediate, and near vision. 
our defocused curves are as one would predict it at the, the near uh, point and the distance and also we're getting this good intermediate vision as, ex as uh, we're finding with these lenses at the 1.5 diopter. The spectacle independence certainly from the FDA trial is absolutely excellent and the halos and glare ha have been very small. These are, are though cases which being very careful about how you select the patients. Thank you.